Hello everyone, welcome to a session that nobody was asking for. We are going to do some interesting stuff today. So, welcome. I got this new pen board and I thought I would do some interesting thought experiments. Welcome to Economics 101 with yo boy JY. That's me. What's this series about? I'm trying to get some practice on this pad, so I'm going to write a little bit more verbose with more verbosity. This whole series right now is going to be about microeconomics. What is microeconomics? Well, it's about how do we do price determination for all the things that we buy for goods and services. I'm going to call this G and S for goods and services. And then also um, the quantity of the good and service. I'm going to go around and note price with the dollar sign and the quantity by the, the hashtag symbol or what we used to call the number sign. So in microeconomics there are generally a few number of actors or agents. It is over a short time frame. And it kind of assumes a couple of things, but really the series is about when do these things not work? When do things turn a little bit more interesting when we put different type of or human aspects to microeconomic principles. After all, this is a human science. So let's see, who are the agents? Well, we got the consumers and the producers. Consumers, they want to determine how much they really want of a good and service. And so how much they want is determined by by let's say somebody's level of income and their preferences. You may like your alligator skin handbags, but I might not. So preferences play a big difference in uh, all kinds of things. We all have different preferences. I don't like apples. I like pears, you know, things like that. And depending on our preferences and our income, we set the price. So as a consumer, uh, they are price setters. Uh, 
On the other hand, producers, their number is determined by the price. Right, depending on what price the consumers want, the producers just have to match the price. And what they what do they do? They compare it to the costs. So what are the costs here? We're talking rent. We're talking uh, materials. We're talking uh, labor costs. And what do what do the producers do? They are quantity setters. So that's important to to note that. It's the consumers that determine the price and producers are the ones that have to meet that price and supply as efficiently as they can compared to their costs. And this only works in an efficient market. So we'll talk more about some of the assumptions here. One of them is that it's a very competitive market. It's not like a monopoly or anything. But maybe you're wondering, what does it mean that I'm a price setter? What does, what does that mean to be a price setter? So here's an example. <laughs> Let's experiment some, with some other colors. Here's an example here. So let's talk about consumers. And why are they price setters? Okay. So what is my goods and service in this example? In, my, in this example, the goods and service is going to be a banana or bananas in general. Okay, and we're not going to think about income. I'm just going to talk about preferences. And it's really preferences that is the more subtle part about why we are price setters. Okay, so here are JY's preferences. Oops. Okay, so here's, here's an experiment. Someone comes around who's a banana salesman and they say, I will give you, I'm here to sell some bananas or I will just give you bananas. And let's say I'm really hungry, you know? I really want bananas here. I really want some bananas. Um, draw some banana trees here. All oh, right. So this person comes up, they say, here's one banana, and I'm real hungry. And I love bananas. So I say, I'll give you $2 for that banana. And the merchant says, cool, that will be $2. And that comes out to be $2 
for each banana. Okay. So then this, I'm still kind of hungry. This guy only has, this person only has bananas. And, uh, but I, I don't really want as much. And so I'm just going to say, I want, I'll pay 150 for the next banana. So the total so far across the two bananas is 350. I just added more. And then the diff and then the average price dips down. So it's total of 350 across two bananas is now 175. Yeah. So the producer agrees the producer of the banana agrees, and this is the ultimate price for two bananas. So now with the third banana, I'm full. I can't eat that many more bananas, but, you know, the persons here, they are willing to sell me this banana for anything. So I say, all right, 50 cents, right? I'm not going to pay no more. 50 cents for a third banana that I must eat right now in front of this <laughs> right in front of this person. <laughs> so across three bananas, that's four dollars. And that comes across to one dollar and thirty. Okay, the, the producer's greedy. They want 34 cents on that one. So they're willing to bend down that low. So let's see about what about the fourth banana. And here we get a interesting little situation. I can't eat any more bananas. I don't want to eat more bananas. I don't, I don't love bananas this much to eat the fourth banana. But the producer says, but tell me, how much would I have to pay you to eat this banana? And I'll say, okay, if you... If you pay me, so this is the this is the price now, is if you pay me one dollar, you as a producer, you're in the hole, but I will eat the fourth banana in right in front of you if you give me one dollar. So across the four <laughs> this seems like funny torture, banana torture. But across the four bananas now, we're down to three dollars. And when we think about the price per uh, banana, it's 75 cents. Yeah. And let's say we're at five. And then I say, well, listen, um, I can't have any more bananas. But the salesman says, but wait, there's more. And the salesman says, Okay, I'm going to pay you $2. I'm going to pay you $2 to eat another banana. And then the total becomes $1 that I pay for all five bananas now, because I'm making money now eating bananas. And that comes out to be about 20 cents. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, I'm just going to draw a little graph on this x axis. We're going to have the number of bananas. And here we'll look at the price of the banana. So it's this, the number of bananas right here, and then this, the price of the banana. Yeah. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five. No, I can make bigger than that. One, two, three, four, five. And then for the dollars, I'm going to put a one dollar and a two dollar. And then I'm going to put like a 50 here. 
That doesn't really look to scale, does it? I'm going to raise this. That looks more to scale. One dollar, two dollar, and one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So what was the story again? Oh yeah. When the the salesman gives me one banana, I said, I I'm hungry. I want the two, I'll pay two dollars for one banana. But by the time I get to two bananas, I'm not as hungry. And so I'm only going to when I get to two bananas, I'm not as hungry. So I only pay one fifty. Or sorry. So after I pay only one fifty, the average price for the banana is one seven five. which is this number. And then at three, the average price I decided I'm not gonna pay as much for the third one. And that brought it down all the way to 330. So I guess, I guess it's more like here, huh? Three and about there. And then the fourth one, that's when the person starts uh, paying me for the bananas. And for the fourth one, I was only willing to pay across the whole four, 75 cents. And then again, I decided, well, across the five bananas, I guess I can make 20 some cents across the five bananas and get five bananas. So you see like this little, let me use a different color. Like you see this little line showing, this is kind of the line showing my preferences, right? This is kind of how much I'm willing to buy bananas for. So, Let's say I don't have to eat all the bananas all the time. I mean, like, I guess I have to consume it, like, immediately, huh? But this is kind of how I, I want to eat bananas. So one thing about this is that it's always decreasing. You know, it's, like, monotonically decreasing here. I'm just going to write that down. Monotonic decreasing. It means that this function is decreasing all the time. So for example, when it's not monotonic decreasing is like I eat three bananas and then I suddenly get hungry again. And then my, my desire to eat might bounce back up and then go back down, right? So it's like monotonic basically means I'm not going to get hungry Again, you know, I'm just going to get less and less hungry and more and more full. Okay. So now, how does income come in? Where does income come in? I'm going to uh, color this preferences. And where does income come in? Well... So this was JY, that's me, and JY with more money, he just has a different sense of the world. You know, he just doesn't care so much about being as stingy as me. And so, so JY with money would uh, kind of across the board will just pay more because the with dollar, dollar, dollar. He just has a different view of reality where he thinks, um, yeah, I can pay more for the banana. It's fine, I can handle it, right? It has nothing to do with the total number of bananas that you want. Total number of bananas is a macroeconomic concept. 
So right now it's really about attitudes of spending depending on your income, right? Just your attitude of spending. So like I alluded to, where does this all break down? Hmm? Where does economics break down? Well, it breaks down when you don't have competitive markets. Competitive. <laughs> competitive markets it also breaks down when there's not enough information so incomplete information and rationality is diverse. So what does not competitive markets mean? Not competitive markets usually means uh, niche markets like Zambonis, instruments, certain types of rare instruments, it could be due to monopoly. Yeah. And few producers. Um, how do I get out of a racer? Anyways. I'm still learning how to use this pad. Few producers. What about incomplete information? What can happen when there's incomplete information? Well, then people have to decide, are they risky? How are they, are they risk averted? Do people uh, try to avoid risk or do they love risk that comes in there and finally rationality is diverse is that when you think about preferences most economic textbooks and classes will have a very uh, small skewed viewpoint on what rationality can be so like for example like what is the rationality of uh, someone who's addicted to drugs and wants to buy uh, illegal drugs or something like that? Uh, uh, you know, a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists would say that they may be behaving in, in somewhat of a rational way. And in fact, you can tweak some of the assumptions of economics and see what the tools might predict for people who have very, very differing preferences that generally economics doesn't look at. So this series is really going to be examining this, this quite a lot. But until we can get through some of the basics of what I was just talking about here, this one's going to be hard to, to get to. So what's the takeaway from today's message? I guess all it's saying is that um, I'm willing to consume more and more and more and more so long as it becomes, you know, a better deal for me. And I need a better and better deal in order for me to eat so many bananas because at a certain point, it's painful to eat this many bananas, right? And so that's what we like to call diminishing marginal returns. And that is what we will continue to discover later. So here, I'll write diminishing 
marginal returns uh, for bananas on on price. Yeah. There was no diminishing marginal return. I would basically say, yeah, I'm just going to eat uh, as many bananas as I want. So oh, maybe not in that color. So let's say we got something that doesn't have diminishing marginal returns. You won't see a, a, a nice bending of the curve. It'll just be kind of linear all the way down. So you see how with Without diminishing returns, we could have, I might want tons and tons and tons and tons of uh, more bananas. If my degree of decay, like let's say I can eat tons of bananas and I don't mind eating tons of bananas, I might be able to stretch out my JY curve even further with diminishing returns. So this might be JY big, big JY who can eat a lot more bananas, right? But this one has the diminishing marginal returns. And I'm not, I didn't mean to have this go up because remember, these are all monotonic decreasing. <laughs> Yeah, monotonic decreasing. Isn't that interesting? Well, anyways, that's it for today. I guess I got a little unhinged towards the end, but kind of interesting how we can draw things a little differently depending on who we are, what we can assume with mathematics and whatnot. So, cool. Check you all on the next one.